Uh, Jackson Hastings, what a performance it was. Uh, do you put that down to a change of attitude or a change in the lineup with him moving to six? Yeah. Yeah, look, I think it's attitude. There was traits that the Tigers showed in this game that we've not seen all season. Now, maybe it's a coincidence that Jackson Hastings was there. I know, having played with him at Great Britain and, and witnessed him play in England, he is a big talker. And he, and he drives those standards and he brings that, those qualities out in people. Dane Laurie, for instance, a couple of kick chases there. And the, the flow on effect from that, so if Dane Laurie doesn't chase and, and put Gutherson behind the line, instead Parramatta are coming out. So there was little effort areas that mm, we've yeah. just not seen from the Tigers all season. So yeah. it was great to see for them. And you know, part of that is down to Jackson Hastings bringing out of them. But you could see it was definitely the attitude. Yeah, oh, I liked it. I like what I saw. I think it was a bit of both. The, yeah. the lineup changes. Obviously, Jackson coming into the side, taking a lot of the talk. But it's actually the first time that Luke and, and Jackson have played seven and six together since round two. So they haven't had a lot of time to probably practice what they have. And, and I like what Kenty said about the forwards. Mm. Um, the first time over four forwards have ran over four, for 100 metres in the season. And, and as, as a half, like that's where the platform's laid. Mm -hmm. And I, I think seeing them play with momentum on the front foot was a different side in attack. Yeah. You know, and... For me, it was enjoyable. We got the chocolates. Did you see a different uh, Luke Brooks? Yeah, I, I think I did, Braith. Um, I think the transition to six, even though he still had the same amount of touches, yeah. the same amount of kicks, he did more of the kicking than in, uh, long kicks. But I think just the whole process of the mindset of, no, it's, you know, it's not my team, it's not on me. Yeah. You know, I can just go out and play footy. And I thought less Jackson... Pressure. Yeah, less pressure. Yeah. I thought Jackson did a real good job of attracting the four defender in so yeah. Luke could have a bit of space and time to play the plays he did. He had yeah. two tries last night off the back of time and space yeah. and that was created from the forwards laying the platform and then Jackson doing a great job going through him so it's great signs for the Tigers. I think as well what it's worthwhile pointing out is this wasn't the perfect game from the Tigers mm. they give four cheap penalties coming out of trouble for the Paramount Eels mm. and, and whether or not they defended it or they just survived yeah. those are traits that you know, Michael Maguire would be really yeah. pleased. They dealt with adversity really well. We've all been in situations where we've needed to win or we've had pressure, we've had a, a run of losses. Uh, when you win a game like this, is it just relief or is it more of why haven't we seen this earlier? Well, it's a bit of both. I think for everyone, it would be relief for the players and why haven't we seen it earlier from yeah. probably the coaches, you know? Mm. So I think for the Tigers, the most important part about this win is, and for me, this is how I'd do it personally, I'd pretend I lost this game. Because whatever mindset and whatever attitude they had going into this game was desperation. I thought they showed little things like you talked about the Dane Laurie chase, like the little moments in games. Yep. I'd try and channel that same attitude and, and think, you know what, let's just pretend, pretend we lost that. Because if you that's go out and do, do that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, how do you do that? I've, I've done it a lot yeah. in my yeah. career. Yeah. See, I, di I disagree, Benji. I, I think the Tigers have, have got to enjoy this and, and recognise no, this feeling no. that comes with winning. No, I like, don't think how different training's going to be, recovery was today and the rest of the training yeah, week. But, uh, Jimmy, I'll, 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 let me put this down. I've been there and every time there's a win happen, a yep. softening happens in the attitude and the mindset where you start patting yourself on the back, then you come out the next week and then yeah. it changes. You there, need to there's keep... a difference between not patting yourself on the back and, and, and acting like yeah, you've lost. That, that... I, I think Maguire's got to go in and, and, and show his team that this is what this is the, the type of video session that you want to turn up to. Mm. If you're drumming down and saying, hey, we give these penalties away, yeah, point it out. But I think the message and the approach is going to be different from what it would have been if they had lost this game. Well, don't you want them in the same mindset they were going you... into the Parramatta game? You, you do, but you don't but, want to but soften I, but the I back of a win. I wouldn't beat them down for that. In no, any but it's, it's not beating them yeah, down. Okay. It's, it's getting yourself in the yeah, right. The, the same mindset. The same mindset. Yes, but I think the 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 the, the, the you know the, the vibe at training this week will be very very different, and rightly so. They've earned it. No, I, I agree with that. I, I I've just seen so many times there off the back of a win and, and unable to string two, three wins in yeah. a row together because the feeling of winning can soften your attitude. Yeah, and oh, it can no, make absolutely. you yeah. think you're going better than what you are. It's, you know, this is just my opinion. Jimmy, Jackson Hastings uh, went over to the Super League. He's recaptured his best form now, and you could see that he come back with a, a spring in his step. Why, why is that? What, what has he benefited, you know, from being over in the Super League? Well, look, there's certainly a lot less attention there. So he's not getting the, you know, the, the media attention or, the, or the, the attention in the street. But I think for you, you look at a guy like Jackson Hastings, firstly, he took Salford to a grand final. So mm. anyone that follows the Super League closely or knows anything about it, Taking, this, taking Salford to a grand final is a bigger upset than them beating the Paramount Reels yesterday. Yeah. That was a huge, huge achievement that he managed to achieve. But on a personal level, I think what he's done is he's gone back there and he's probably realised, hey, this is my last chance. 
I'm obviously a talented individual. I'm a good footballer. I've been sacked from a number of teams and maybe his goal was to get back to the NRL. Maybe it was just to, to get back playing the sport that he loves. But I think he realised, hey, if I mess this up, the town's gone to waste. Mm. He didn't. He focused on his job. He managed to get a contract back here and good on him because he's mm. taken his opportunity. But you guys have talked about it right early on the show. Like he seems like a real different person. The way he talks, mm. like the way he demands wins and standards. And if it's obvious for everyone to see, then he kn he knew he had to make some changes. And coming back and talking to like players in the club, yeah. they've been really impressed with what he's brought to the Tigers. Yeah, he looks really mature. Now we spoke about Luke Brooks's form playing five five eight. They have to keep him there. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah a no, it's a no-brainer. No I think what we saw on the weekend is, is a classic example of the numbers switching and the mindset changing. And Jackson having more direct contact and talk with the way the side goes makes Luke's job easier not have to do that. And yeah. if his strength's always been his running game, then this probably should have happened sooner. Mm. You know, and we saw on the weekend what he can do when he gets time and space, and he did a great job of that. Uh, you are a bit critical of the form or Parramatta yesterday. Ooh. What did you see in their game? Yeah, look, I think this is a big loss for Parramatta. And I look back to last season, and they were two points outside the top four. And sometimes you have those type of years, and you look back and you go, if only we'd have beat, if mm. we won that game, mm. that would have been two points. Like, not all two points are created equally, but this is the, I think, you know, everyone's talking up Parramatta's chances, and rightly so, because the proof's in the pudding with them. But for them to concede, you know, a push against the scrum, and they might just look back at this game come September and there'll be two points outside the top four and Brad Arthur will be saying to his men, like, how didn't we, how, how aren't we in the top four? And as a player, I've been, I've been there myself mm. where you, you sit back and you're in that five to eight position and you look back at some games and you're just going, well, if we'd have won that and we'd have won that, mm. that's four more points. Mm. We're in the top four and I think for Parramatta to go on and and break this drought and win the Premiership, they need to be the top four, and they can't afford this. They, they really can't. It was, it was really disappointing from the years. I don't know whether it was just a, an attitude thing. We spoke about the attitude of the Tigers, but the Eels, for all money, should have won that game. They really should have, and they'll be very disappointed, and it might catch up with them come the end of the season. It's fair to assume that whoever does finish top four will all have beaten West throughout exactly. the year. You, you can only assume that, Paul, mm. yeah.